Order! 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 On the day of the incident... Proven. When we met you at Windybanks, you said this. <laughs> Proven! I'll be taking that whatever it is of McGillis down to the yard, thank you very much. So hand over. No! Don't! Don't give it to him! It's mine that is mine! I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to McGill has to be taken as evidence now. Scotland Yard already knew at that time, is that right? Agnes McGill was involved in the stealing of government secrets. My orders were Recover the medium used to convey the secrets leaked from the Ministry. And do it on the QT. Strictly hush hush. And that explains why, when I presented this disc as evidence to the court, you objected so heavily, I presume. Because <laughs> you knew that it contained highly confidential information. Blimey, not likely! I mean, I wasn't that sure of it myself. I realize there's a possibility, that's all. Inspector, surely, surely you're not saying that you're in a corner to acquire the second of these music box discs. You did indeed reveal confidential details of the crime scene to the witness? Between a Bethesda man and giving false testimony? There's no other way that Mr. Grin could have known of the existence of the peephole. It's the only explanation. A deal was struck between these two men. No! <laughs> And I stress if sobering assertion turns out to be founded in truth. It would mean that the second disc is, as we speak, here in this very courtroom. What? In, in this room? How could you possibly make a claim like that? Am I? Because Inspector Gregson is a Scotland Yard detective. What? This is news to me! What's that supposed to mean, eh? A seasoned policeman. <laughs> let you deal with caution. That's what he fucking planted on the other guy. Ah. Uh. Certainly, he would not have accepted a gentleman's agreement in this matter. No, he would insist on having the agreed article upon in the palm yeah, of his hand. Upon. Agreed. Yeah, that. Article agreed upon in the palm of his hand. Good gracious! Then you mean to say? Inspector Gregson already has the item in question in his possession? He has the second disc actually on his person? Then the man that the inspector is searched at once. Definitely! We could only struck a deal with each other when Ginny was testifying before. Gregson hasn't moved from the witness stand since. Lord, please, order an examination of his personal effects immediately. Hmm. Well, Inspector. This young man wants to tone down his imagination. He's insulted me and my profession quite enough. However, if you'll put, him, put this man on bed and dispel any doubts about my involvement, <coughs> they'll happily submit to a body search. What? You don't agree to it? Presume you're aware of the precipice on which you now teeter, my learned student friend. You made a most serious allegation against Scotland Yard here. Ah. Uh, Following the search of the inspector's personal effects, okay. no disc is found. Okay, then how are we going to deal with the fact they're not going to find the disc? <laughs> I mean, we'll just say we'll be deemed he must unfit have put for court service. This trial will end. My country's government will formally demand of yours that you are severely reprimanded. It sounds serious. Indeed. To, to have a visage student make such defamatory remarks about our country's most senior police force. It's not something Her Majesty's government will be able to overlook. Just wrecking room because you're scared. The accusation is beyond serious. You must be prepared for grave consequences. Uh. It's true. Imagine Gregson would have accepted a gentleman's agreement for something so critical. 
This must have physically changed hands, which means the inspector should have it. But somehow, something doesn't feel quite right here. Very well, Council. You know the implications. So let me ask you one final time. We're talking about implications. <laughs> yes, my lord. The implication. Do you still persist in formally requesting a search of the inspector's personal f effects? Yeah, search someone else. <laughs> ah, shit. That was well timed. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the defense formally demands the search be conducted. Well. Don't say you weren't warned. Your typical Nipponese stubbornness may well land you in hot water this time. That's the lesson will do some good. Fair enough. I've got nothing to hide. Very well then. Very well then. Belif, conduct a search of the inspector's personnel. <laughs> Defense demands a search, but not of Inspector Gregson. What? Now what's all this? I'm the one you're accusing, aren't I? I thought you wanted to search me! <coughs> no, no, Inspector. Not you. <coughs> Somebody else. What's the meaning of all this, eh? Lost it at last, have you, Sunshine? The court should have to put up with this nonsense. You're being completely irrational. Objection. Let him cook. <laughs> Quiet! All of you! He was doing what you all told him to do, and having the courage of his convictions. You should respect that and listen to what he has to say in good faith. Cuz, that's the British way. Hold on, can you confirm? <laughs> I'm slow back. Well said, young lady. <laughs> Indeed, this court is in awe of the defense counsel's conviction. And eagerly awaits his next words. <clears throat> you what? Now don't be hasty, my lord! I'm not mistaken about the things I've seen in court today. I'm fairly sure I know who has that disc at the moment. There's only one person it can be. Council, of whom do you request the search now? Send a speedboat after the uh, ship that Susato's on. Yeah, clearly. Really. Search Barrack Van Zeeks now. Of, uh, of my lord, Mr. Nash Skulkin. Well, I never. Blimey! Eh? Me? Him? Very well then. Bedeth. The straight the witness and conduct a thorough search of his personal effects. <laughs> Please, my lord. Inspector? Scotland Yard, um, has to object to this search. Object to your objection. <laughs> Why? Unfortunately for you, Inspector, your objections carry no weight here. Eh? In this courtroom, only the prosecution and the defense have the authority to object. But, but Lord Van Zeeks! I have no idea what forces are in play that might influence your actions. Personally, I have no intention of obstructing the course of this trial. Uh, so kindly, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Belif, Belif, carry out the search. Bolif, whack his pee pee. <laughs> no, 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 I, I don't know nothing, nothing about no disc. Carry out. And they did. Oh. Uh, here, my lord, in, in the witness's pocket. I found this. Ah. Good lord, that's... Another music box disc. Oh, nothing about it. Nothing. <sighs> that is the second music box disc, a box disc left behind by Magnus McGilded. Is it not, Inspector Gregson? Uh, oh! Order, order, order! Mr. Skulkin, what have you to say for yourself? 
Gordon Bennett. I mean, just Gordon Flamin' Bennett. I swear I didn't know nothing about that disc. Honest to God. You got a good face there. <laughs> Constable, <coughs> will you please explain what exactly is going on here? The alleged deal was struck that was struck was between this witness and this detective, no? Without question, my lord. Then, for pity's sake, why on earth was this man in possession of the disc that the inspector traded for information? Inspector Gregson is a shrewd, calculating man who rarely loses his composure. At one particular point in his trial, he exhibited some unusual behavior for a brief moment. Dr. Cole, what unusual behavior? This is, this is another meta thing, but because pressing that statement led to that interaction we had to do the excuse me on, um, where he was, you know, harassing yeah. Nash mm -hmm. or whatever, and then that statement didn't lead anywhere, I'm like, okay... They required us to see that. They must have required us to see that, which means, but nothing's changed. So the only other, the only thing that can progress here is uh, pressing every statement. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way the answer is to present something, because otherwise I could have done that before seeing the thing. Which, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Ah. It was yes during my cross examination of Mr. Graydon. Tell me, Mr. Graydon, when you left the pawn brokery that night. Is there any chance with a second disc in your jacket pocket? Admit to nothing of the sort. <laughs> uh. When Mr. Graydon answered my questions, the inspector appeared to have grabbed Nash Skulkin by his coat and was shaking him violently. <laughs> I think he may have enjoyed it. God. Yeah, he did it all. Thought me Naga was gonna fall clean off, I did. I was wishing I'd been born as me brother I was! <laughs> what exactly happened to make the detective attack you like that? I ain't got a clue! He just suddenly turned and, gr and grabbed me, me whistle like that and started shaking me! Stop saying that he grabbed your whistle! Why the, bla why the blazes did you mess with the third gun when we got you down to the station? That's what he said! I can wait your whistle, baby, whistle, baby. <laughs> You're the right down me ear all he did! Me head's still throbbing now! The way the detective behaved then was extremely out of character. Looking back now, it must have been that that he did- then that he did it. That was the opportunity Inspector Gregson created for himself in order to hide the disc. Well, bless my wig, he hit it? You. But I'm afraid I failed to comprehend the motive here. The detective had acquired the disc he was after. Why on earth would he then proceed to hide it in another man's pocket? Because that guy was getting arrested. This is a court of law. He would have submitted the item as evidence. It would appear, my lord, that the inspector was not at, uh, not at liberty to do that. Why ever not? As the man himself revealed earlier, his current assignment has some special conditions. <laughs> My orders were Recover the medium used to convey the secrets leaked from the Ministry And do it on the QT, strictly hush 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 hush, our top secret assignment is it? As far as we're, we're aware, the information stolen comes from confidential government communications it would seem that if that information were to be revealed in court as evidence, it would be problematic. That's not the situation, Inspector. Hmm. I'm operating under direct orders from the Ministry. I'm afraid I'm not living to answer that question. So, realizing there was a chance you, that you may be searched here in court, you took steps to hide the disc acquired from the witness. Ah, does this mean? only pretended to attack Mr. Skulk in order to get close enough to him. Slipped the second disc into his pocket. So it was all a pretense! <clears throat> well now, Inspector Gregson, and you, Mr. Graydon. 
Are you prepared to admit to the accusation made against you of this alleged deal? Admit to it? Yours truly, please. Mr. Graydon! Clearly our Eastern visitor has some uncommonly active imag imagination. However, there's no proof that I passed the disc to the inspector. Oh, come on. Oh, come, come on. on. Gone on long enough already. But then, will you explain the reason why you knew about the peephole? I'm under no obligation to explain. You're in court, my <laughs> dude. What? Yes, I lied in my testimony. So what? That's not illegal. <laughs> That I admit, so sentence me accordingly. That is all I admit. Murder, leaking government secrets, striking a deal with a detective. Over this, this young Eastern man's fancy. I have no idea what any of that is about. You... What? What about you then, Inspector Gregson? You admit to making a deal with Mr. Graydon in order to acquire the disc. Ladies and gents of the jury, as Scotland Yard Inspector, I will declare this and nothing more. I am acting in the best interest of the country. Whatever I've done, it's been in the name of justice. So, as members of the public of this fine country, I'd like to think that justice will be your guide in life when you're making your decisions. <clears> hmm. <throat> <clears throat> this is quite a quandary indeed. I'm gonna try that when I get in trouble. Just say justice a bunch of times. <laughs> really have I encountered such extraordinary tumultuousness in the concluding of the trial. Nevertheless, in the absence of any further evidence to be presented... I can't think of anything else either. I just have to hope the jury doesn't buy it. <laughs> I believe it is time to put the matter to the jury for their final leadings. Well now, as a fellow servant of Queen and Country, I must say I sympathise with the old inspector. Yes, he's a dependable man, I'm quite sure. In service, one becomes a good judge of character. Even crossing your eyes doesn't help when it comes to looking at this case. It's all blurred to me. Well, as a fellow professional, I'd like to put my faith in a detective, really. Raiden is highly as highly skilled operator. Stop! Currently in presence of idol. Oh, Stop. shut the fuck up! Detective has most much trusted eyes. More than this, I cannot say. Don't believe it! These six jurors are useless. They're going to believe Gregson. They declare the decision now. Is Jenny going to be found guilty? <sighs> Oh I managed to produce some definitive e evidence right now, then we're going to lose. Is there some proof that Graydon killed Mr. Windebank or stole those government secrets? So evidence to force Gregson into admitting that he struck a deal with a witness. Well then, counsel, I think it's time I imposed on the jurors to declare their final decisions, no? That is, unless you have some compelling evidence you have thus far not presented to the court. I let the judge call on the jurors to announce their leanings. You will be found guilty. There's no choice then, Bruno. You have to throw some more evidence at them. What? Is it now? It all comes down to this. Do I pre who do I present the evidence against? Gregson or Graydon? Are you kidding me? Uh, what the fuck? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we have to look through the court record, uh, I guess. Uh, I guess we just fucking flip through the court record and see what we can come up with. God. Alright, let's look at everything. Alright. Armband is useless. The pawnbroker's ticket. Uh, this shows... <laughs> the date of... <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. Uh, 13th of February. A small box. 10 shillings. Uh, this, this, this is like... Some, this is meaning nothing to me. I don't think this has anything to do with anything. No. No. Um, Jesus representation papers. I don't think this... No. Definitely doesn't do anything. Redemption ticket owned by the victim, Mr. Winderbank. This is de this is Mason's blood, according to us. Okay, but that doesn't do anything. I don't think. 
Blood samples, they don't care about this. Yeah, except that. Hmm. I don't think this has anything to do with it. Um, it should be that. Just cause. Last scheduled omnibus on the day. Stab wound to the abdomen. Mason Milverton, Breakmaker, East End of London. Magnus McGilded. Conviction was assured with three items. Testimonies, a surprise full 27 Yep. Today's yeah, paper. Today's paper is not gonna help. Yeah, that's the ministry thing. Autopsy report. Pop window bank. 1 to 130. Single bullet wound up half the victim's back. No other visible signs of trauma. Instant death from posterior anterior bullet wound to the heart. Bullet into the body from the back. Not gender rising diagonal trajectory. Bullet wound is shown here. Crime scene <coughs> floor plan. I don't think this does anything. No. This is... <sighs> Pop Winterbank's gun. This is the Skulkin Brothers gun. This is the photo of Gina. This is the photo later. Yeah, we've got nothing. Dead. The stereoscope isn't gonna do anything. This music box disc, I don't think, is gonna do anything. No. Shomes' pouch. Shomes pouch. That's not gonna do anything. Right. The third bullet. We already third bullet. used that. Small music box. Small music box. So like, already. we have both discs now. I have no fucking idea. What do what do we need? We need either some proof that Graydon killed Mr. Windybank, or proof that Graydon stole government secrets, or evidence to force Gregson into admitting that he struck a deal with the witness. I feel like I, f I somehow feel like it's Gregson. I feel like we've you know gone on the we've gone on the Graydon stuff over and over enough times that I don't know if anything new has come up. The only thing is, yeah. the only thing is, we have to somehow convince or make Gregson forced to admitting to the deal. We have to somehow force him. Yeah. But what would force him? I have no idea. Play the discs. So we need to disincentivize him from allowing the trial to continue this way. Because if it goes as, as it does, then... Mr. Graydon will get off scot-free. Though presumably, obviously, the government will fucking know what he did and, you know, he's not going to be able to do it anymore. So that's not of any concern to them. Really, as far as Scotland Yard is concerned, it's like, okay, they're letting one guy get off with murder and these secrets won't go out anymore. But what's, yeah. the, what's the problem with that? Why is there some reason that Gregson wouldn't want that? Is, th is there anything we can convince him of? <sighs> Hmm. Yeah, I have no I have I'm I have no idea. I guess try picking Gregson to see where the dialogue leads. Maybe there'll be some clue there. Did save. I did? Yeah. I'll do it anyway. Yeah, okay. Oh boy! <clears throat> Inspector Gregson, there's one final piece of evidence I would like to—I would like you to see. Eh? What's that then? Don't know. If you refuse to acknowledge that you did in fact strike a deal with a witness here today, you leave us no choice but to examine this piece of evidence thoroughly. Well, go on. This is my last chance. Unless I'm going to have to force his hand here. The final piece of evidence to get this detective to admit to the deal he's clearly struck with Graydon. Is it just... I'm not sure why this would be the case, but are we just... Yeah, I can, don't know either, can, but can I don't just see to play the disc? anything else remotely related. Is that... Mr. Mugulet's peculiar music box, Council? Yes. With the disc already in place, ready to play. I think perhaps now would be a good time to listen to the sound produced by the music box again. Only this time... Ah. The second disc we just discovered is set in place as well. Oh, this would prove that it's government this secrets. Would be... 
Yeah, basically. Duh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes that sense. Would... Goodness, this disc console. I kind of lucked my way into that one, but I, uh, like, I threw, like, what do you call it, like, meta logic? <laughs> but. Yeah. I, I, I figured it out, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Goodness, this disc console. No, wait! I, I can't let you do that! Why not? B because, um, well. Because it's got nothing to do with this case, that's why! Bullshit. <laughs> Not true, Inspector. <laughs> eh? It has nothing to do with the case, yeah, so we, we, we were trying to assert. We were trying to assert this whole time that it was government sequence, and like, you can't prove it because you only have one disc, and we're like, bullshit. But now we have a second one, we can fucking prove it, and that has nothing to do yeah. with Gregson, technically, like... We, we can just be like, okay, so on the matter of Graydon, we can prove he's leaking government secrets, let's do this. And so Gregson has to say no, <laughs> like, because we have people yeah. in here that can hear the Morse code. Okay. Didn't say the thing! Sorry, sorry. I'm just excited. <laughs> the defense is already proposed. Yes. The sounds heard by the court earlier from, er, from this music box were part of a Morse code message. You know that Morse code comprises of two distinct tones. <clears throat> the fence believes that the second disc contains a second tone needed to complete the message. I was just confused because I was like, oh, well, that wouldn't work because Gregson can just deny us to play the music box. But why, no but why would to... he be able to do that? <laughs> right, he has yeah. sway here. He doesn't have authority, yeah. And now we have a chance to confirm that theory. Cry out loud, sunshine. We're talking about state secrets here. If you go lend the whole courtroom of confidential information like that, it's... it's treason! Do you admit the charge? In order to protect those state secrets, you engage in unlawful dealings with a witness. You're... you're mad! If you let that secret information out of the public domain, you'll... you'll be making an enemy of the entire British government, you idiot! No, you... And will I fail, too? It's on you, Gregson. <coughs> now forget, Inspector, that you... Scotland Yard officer lead confidential case details to, to a witness. <coughs> you continue to lie to the court, not because, by fair means or foul, you're determined to do your duty. Well, by fair means or foul, I'm prepared to do mine. Don't you dare. We'll stop at nothing to protect my client. I don't care who I make an enemy of. Respect. This is Kino. <laughs> Good. My lord, if you please. Court must hear the sounds made by that music box. Come on, Van Zeke, for Pete's sake, stop him! Objection. Let him come. <laughs> Here comes the leg. Inspector, you should know my methods by now. I'm a prosecutor. No Scotland Yard puppet. Face! Urgh. In this courtroom, my duty is to the law. So let me propose a toast. Uncovering the truth. By fair means or foul. No! Hell yeah. <clears throat> very well, the offensive stench here and that of the prosecution has, made, has been made very clear, I feel. Therefore, in accordance with the offensive's request, <clears throat> The court will now listen to the music box. Listen as the as this music box is set in operation once more. All right, let's fucking go, boys. This time with the second disc in place and both discs play simultaneously. Let's fucking go. Oh, listen to that. It's unmistakable now. It's Morse code. All right, all right, I admit. Whatever you want. But for the love of God, shut that blooming box up. Oh, boy. Let me ask you again, then, Inspector Gregson. 
you, or did you not, strike a deal with the witness next to you in the stand, Mr. Ashley Graydon? Specifically, did you furnish the witness with confidential case details in exchange for this music box desk? Did you reveal the existence of the people of the Pondbroker storeroom door, Inspector? I did. Stop! What are you doing, man? It's all exactly like that young Eastern lawyer said. The trial resumed after the recess, and we were stood here in the stand together. That's when he approached me with the deal. Shut up, you imbecile! Shut up! You there. The detective who turned up at the pawnbroker the other day, aren't you? You may have something you're looking for, Inspector. Only at this very moment. How about a trade? I suggest you accept. Information that may make certain individuals uncomfortable will soon become very public indeed. I couldn't let the information become public knowledge, not under any circumstances. So I accepted the man's proposal and told him details about the case I should have put him in the clear. The people in the storeroom and the blood stains on the overcoat. Giving false testimony, this witness intended to have the defendant wrongly accused of murder. Inspector, you knew that. You still reveal those details to facilitate the witness's perjury. I did. But it turned out the people had only been made the, that night after the incident took place. Scotland Yard wasn't aware of that, if I'm perfectly honest. Mr. Graydon, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Nothing and no one left for you to hide behind. <clears throat> you struck a deal with the inspector in order to escape conviction of a very serious crime. Only this. You are the third intruder who broke into the pawn brokery in the night in question. You perpetrated the murder of the proprietor, Mr. Pop Windybank. You, you. Oh. Traitor! Bailiff, Bailiff, restrain that man! At once! Bailiff, whack his pee pee. <laughs> I like that breakdown. They uh, they yeah, start getting like good. progressively over the top in uh, a lot of the other games, and this one's very uh, kind of. It's simple. very chill. It's very no, it's very yeah. simple, but it's like it m makes sense that it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Just that's it then. He just he just fucking loses it. And he wants to kill Chris. <laughs> it's all over. I despise my life growing up. Those slums are vile places. I was cursed from birth, born into poverty, the son of a penniless artisan. My parents did nothing but quarrel all day long. What little money they had was never spent on me. So I set about studying to better myself, to only escape from that hellhole. And you eventually became a communications officer. I admire your determination. Then you decided to try sell government secrets. Why? Isn't it obvious? Because I wanted money. Got to have money. <laughs> Even now, years later, the nightmares of my life in the slums wake me in the small hours. I wanted to drown them out with more money than anyone who lived in that squalor could ever imagine. And one day, I met him. Mr. Magnus McGilded. Hmm. 
for you're a fiend with a with a quiet talent. So so you are. I I have money to throw your way if you're interested. All you need do is go along with me little plan now. Steal the ministry's telegraphic message logs, and Magilda would buy them for a handsome sum. As I was responsible for inspections of the Ministry's communications office, it was a simple enough task. The lure of the Devil's offerings. How easy it is to succumb. But you must surely have realized the seriousness of the crime you are committing. And for that reason, I took great lengths to ensure that my actions were untraceable. By using the music box. My father was a brickmaker, though my mother divorced him when I was still a child. Yes, Mr. Mason Melverton. That's right. He was very skilled with his hands. He'd once been a music box maker's apprentice. I imagine his uh. skills would be sufficient to create a machine that could generate Morse code. Mm. So I sought out my father again. Employ his services. It was the first time I'd seen him since I left the slums ten years earlier. Mm. Uh, I guess nobody's voiced uh, him until now, I'll do it. Yeah. Look at you, Ashley. What a fine gent you've become, eh? What is a different man to the one in my memory? A thin, frail old man. Poverty had never broken him. I corrupted him like it had me. I was sure that he wouldn't help me if I told him the real reason. I made up a story. I've got some work for you, Father. I need some music box discs made. Music, music box. Oh. Music box discs, eh? A musician friend of mine has written some mu oh. oh. <laughs> damn it. Why are there name tags here? I don't know. A musician friend of mine has written some music he wants to sell to the public. I brought the score with me. Or two, actually. I'd be delighted, son. Oh, it's been 20 years since I did any work like this, though. Hey, fetch my tools, would you? They're in the loft. Hmm. That's how I had to make the two discs. Thereby splitting the information in two. We're taking considerable precautions indeed. Just to protect myself as much as anything. Meant I could deal with McGilded in two separate transactions. The first involved the first of the dis two discs, music box for playing them, exchanged them with McGilded for ten guineas. Then, on receipt for, of the second disc, he would pay a thousand guineas. So, what happened on the omnibus two months ago? It's the second part of a deal. Exchange of the second disc. Yes. I'd sold the man information that way a number of times already. It seems he became reluctant to part with his money. That doesn't quite make sense, Mr. Graydon. For why was it that on the omnibus two months ago, your father, Mr. Milverton, was the one dealing with Mc Mr. McGillard and not yourself? I received the thousand guineas after my first completed dealings with McGillard. I decided to give 200 to my father for his troubles. But my father realized something was amiss. In time, he worked out that I must be involved in something dubious. And when he did, he said to me, Next time there's an exchange, I'll let your old man do it, understand? Otherwise, I won't take your money anymore. <clears throat> That was my father's way of dealing with it, I suppose. I'm into the omnibus, hand over the second disc, and take the money from McGilded. That's it. He had no idea what was actually on the discs I'd asked him to make. He never knew. Just like I'll never know why everything went so horribly wrong that night. I guess he was worried about him. All I know is the disc was taken from him. He never returned home. It was only then that I found out what sort of monster McGilded really was. So 
though after ten years of not once uttering it, I swore on my father's name. To exact revenge. Revenge? Is that one with even the remotest knowledge of a man will no doubt be able to imagine? The guild that brought all his wealth and influence to bear was despicable of ways. To crush any, res any semblance of justice in his trial. The crime scene was tampered with, evidence was fixed, and witnesses were bribed. The trial two months ago was a farce from start to finish. My feet had barely touched British soil back then. I walked into that hornet's nest, completely unaware of the sinister background to it all. <clears throat> I'd made plenty of money out of my dealings with McGilded by then. I spared nothing in my arrangements two months ago. I knew exactly who to hire. If you're willing to pay the price, are people in the city willing to do anything you ask? Gilded himself had shown me that. Are you saying that... I think you have the picture now. After he twisted everything into his favor in this courtroom to ensure he walked free. I took matters into my own hands and delivered the justice that monster deserved. Oh. That tragic accident following the trial here two months ago was planned and executed by yours truly. Kill its death that day. Caused by this man. Hmm. Really, he's a hero. Everything is ready, sir, if you'd like to follow me into the courtroom. What's this, officer? It's as sure as I was led to believe. I hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There are some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making tracks now. It is time for the inspection. They're going to examine the omnibus again, or so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. Ah. That policeman who came to tell McGill that he could examine the omnibus again. That's right. Imposter. Hide by me. How sassy. <laughs> Gilded used his wealth to manipulate the trial. He paid people to adulterate the omnibus with all manner of false evidence. He threatened witnesses to lie in their testimony. I gave the man a taste of his own medicine, once the omnibus was doused in paraffin. My sham policeman ushered me gilded inside and sent him on a one-way journey to hell. An eye for an eye. That's how I avenged my father's death. My name is Inigo Montoya. A spine-chilling account, indeed. That wasn't the end of it for me. It was a loose end, you see. Loose end? Yes. I should think it's obvious. The second disc, which my father had taken into exchange with McGilded. Ah, yes. There was indeed no mention of it in the man's trial two months ago. Because it had been removed from the scene of the crime. So, hang on. McGilded was uh, killed uh, Mason Milverton on the 15th, right? And the small box was deposited on the 13th. He must have been mm -hmm. planning to kill Milverton the whole time, and so he knew he'd be taken into police custody. So that's why he hit yep. it with pawnbrokers. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. That makes sense now. When I realized it was missing, I remembered something. One thing for the first time I dealt with McGilded. This is the first of the two discs, and the music box you need to play them. Hello? Hello? Yeah? See you online. Oh, sorry, I... The... Yeah, they, everything froze and everything went silent, sorry. Uh... Well, look at that now. What an ingenious little invention. 
father has promised. Ten guineas for you, young man. What's this? Nipang's pawn brokery. Ah, it is a brown pawn broker's ticket, so it is. You can use it to redeem an article I've deposited there for ye. There's no need to give a name. Just hand over the ticket, tell the fiend the watchword. I put a jewel in pawn for ye. It'll fetch a good ten guineas if you sell it, so it will. I've never heard of a pawn broker being used in quite that way before. Have you not, Mr. Graydon? London's pawn brokeries are very useful places, you know. Each one is like an extremely secure vault. Ooh. So I knew that if he'd taken steps to hide the disc, it would be in that pawn brokery somewhere. And that on the night he killed my father, he must have entrusted the ticket to someone. Yes, to Gina. I remember now, when we first met you at Windybanks that afternoon, two days ago, I had a description of Mr. Stroud written down. Did you know who you were looking for? From the trial, that pickpocket's testimony was clearly peculiar. Anyone could see that. You realized immediately that she was another of Miguel's pawns, that he must have threatened her somehow. This is almost over. I need to get food. I <laughs> <laughs> was fairly convinced that it would be her who had the ticket. I started to make some inquiries. Inquiries? I had a strong suspicion that the girl would come out of the woodwork on the redemption deadline. He's absolutely right. And yes, sure enough, she did. All I needed to do was wait until the girl went to Windybanks to redeem the articles. Unfortunately, she redeemed only McGillet's overcoat and the one disc that was in its pocket. All important music box with the second disc inside was missing. Because it had already been forfeited two days earlier. I was unaware of that fact. I had not been. I could have avoided my nighttime excursion. Meanwhile, as our investigation into the stolen government secrets was progressing, we picked up on the fact that McGillan was involved. Spectre, you recovered fast. My orders were to recover the stolen information as quickly as possible. So we started gathering the first possessions and examining what, whatever we could lay our hands on. We had a full-scale investigation going on at the yard, but we had to keep it as quiet as we could. Then, when the inspector here took the disc from me in the pawn brokery that day, I became I become nervous. Literally unplayable. Yeah. yeah. I was sure the music box on the second disc was still in the, there in the shop somewhere. I knew that it was a race against time. I had to find those articles before the police did. That's what prompted you to break into the place that same night. The help of your old friends, the Scorpion Brothers. What happened that night in the pawn brokery? I can only describe as a nightmare. Lash and Ringo were searching the counter. They located the music box I'd sold to McGilder on the shelves of forfeited articles. The second disc was inside. Yes, I slipped it into my pocket with a very deep sigh of relief. Then, something entirely unexpected happened. What are you doing in my shop? A gunshot rang out into the shop. In the shop. I felt a sharp pain in my left arm. The broker fired his gun and the bullet pierced your limb. Yes, exactly. But unfortunately, I decided to bring my own gun with me that night. Just in case. And he killed them. You didn't need to see that bag. I'm pretty sure we could have worked out that's what happened. Yeah. Before I knew what was happening, I'd fired back. The man had already turned to flee. I hadn't intended to fire in his direction, much less kill him. But unfortunately for both of us, the bullet hit home. It struck.
struck him in the middle of his back as he fled through the storeroom door for refuge. A sorry, sorry tale. It all took place in the blink of an eye. Don't imagine Nash and Ringo even realized what had happened at first. I was terrified, so I fled. And that's the whole story. It's everything that happened at Windybanks on that wretched night. Mm hmm.